Bravo, runway. Modern aircraft are highly complex machines with millions of parts, making up hundreds of systems with thousands of interconnections. The design of a new aircraft involves parts created by computation tools, tested in wind tunnels, and on dedicated test benches. And these are indispensable for the development and certification. After years of careful planning, design adjustments, the integration of new materials and the latest innovations, the aircraft is finally ready to fly. However, in many situations, how an aircraft actually behaves is only really discovered when it takes off. That is why flight tests are essential. Let's look at some examples. In wind tunnels, very low speeds and high Mach number flying characteristics can be identified. But due to various factors, such as scale effect, it is necessary to perform flight tests to confirm the handling qualities of the airplane. 18, this is also true for ground effect. Consequently, the tuning of the control laws close to the ground for takeoff, landing, and autoland is a hands-on process involving progressive adjustment of the control parameters by the engineers. Aerodynamic coefficients are not known exactly before flying and there are sometimes surprises. Final tuning of the flight control laws is carried out in flight, mainly at the limit of the flight domain such as for the high angle of attack protections. The development of the braking system suffers from the same difficulty. The forces applied on the wheels vary with the lift created by the speed and in ground effect it is not possible to build a proper computation model. In addition, for some airplanes the distribution of the weight on the various wheels is not precisely known. Therefore, the tuning and the determination of the performances of the braking system, such as the maximum energy for the brakes, can only be performed by flight tests. The forces on the structure of the airplane may have been underestimated or overestimated during the design phase. They are first confirmed by tests on a static airframe. Then the huge number of load sensors on development aircraft allows the final validation. Even after computations and ground tests, a risk of flutter in the flight envelope up to VD and MD, which are the design dive speeds used for the structural sizing, cannot be totally excluded. A progressive extension of the flight domain by tests up to these speeds is required. Systems also need to be tested in real flight conditions. At the beginning of a program, anomalies may be found due to deficiencies in the design or the installation. The air conditioning system is tested in flight, as the model of exchange with the outside of the fuselage is not sufficiently precise. In addition, the circulation of air inside the cabin is checked in real conditions. We have only reviewed here some of the areas where flight tests are necessary. YASA and FAA regulations impose flight tests in many domains because, very often, it is not possible to guarantee the results by computation or ground tests. The evolution of the certification rules leads to more tests being performed to certify the airplane for all types of operations. ETOPS at entry into service is just one example. In addition, the high complexity of new functions such as flight control protections 
systems to improve comfort and so on, increases the need for flight test verification. Therefore, the number of flight hours necessary to develop and certify a new aircraft is almost the same as in the past, despite the fact that the engineers have access to more parameters and have more powerful tools for faster tuning. Flight tests are really necessary.